The carousel with five meter in radius spin with full period of five seconds. This is what happened when you saw this kind of information. Uh, draw diagram first. Uh, here is the carousel. Uh, and this might be a real horse in the carousel, right? You, you can see the the carousel is what we uh, ever play in our childhood, right? The spinning around uh, horse figure, right? This carousel spin uh, with the period of five seconds. The distance is from the rim of the carousel to the central is five meter. This means the angular frequencies of this carousel. So as we uh, did in our previous example, we know the angular frequencies is when you determine the uh, angular distance by the time but if you know the the whole period and the whole angular distance of this movement is 2 pi right so you sub 2 pi here and the time is your period and you know the time already is 5 seconds as a period so here you got the angular frequencies is 0.4 pi or uh, 1.256 radian per second. This is the A4 angular frequencies of this carousel. How about B? If you would like to determine the tangential speed, one person sit on the carousel riding this horse uh, at 5 meter away. So what is the tangential speed? It's quite simple, right? You got the V out of the the distance that carousel moving in a circular motion. In distance or in the total part here, I represent this S, right? Which is S here over the T. So that you got S over complete the period. So it's your two pi R over t and you sub the information in is 2 pi r is at 5 meter away from the center and t is the 5 second so you got 2 pi as the velocity here right which is uh, 6 point 6.28 meter per second. This is the tangential velocities. If I say it correctly, it's like only the magnitude that you're looking after in this case. But if you would like to state this as a vector, if you said you would like to determine Vt as a vector, how can you define it? I will teach you about the the additional coordinate since we know right the Cartesian in two dimension for x and y we have unit vector i that pointing to x direction we have unit vector j that point to y direction for the circular motion like this we can determine the new uh, coordinate we call this as a polar coordinate since this is our Cartesian in normal like x and y we have the object that moving from one position to another position and we would like to determine this point in new coordinate we call uh, a polar coordinate to be precise so polar coordinate this is the Cartesian the previous one Cartesian 
I will explain about this more, but I will just have a brief idea to you here. So at this part, you see the angle is moving from x axis for theta, which is we can determine the new uh, axis as this as a theta axis. So you have the unit vector of this theta, and you call theta hatch. Not only the theta that you can see, you can see the 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 radial distance is moving toward this part. And you also need to mean this is a vector of the radius. This is the vectors of the theta. So you can determine the unit vector of the pointing radius at this part. So you have the unit vector of R hatch and theta hatch in the polar coordinate to determine the direction that moving in the circle is similar to you have i and j or k that pointing toward x and y direction and this is what we represent for vt if you would like to write down the vt as a vector because the the question asking you about the tangentials Velocity, if that's if it says so, but now it said about the speed, so the speed is okay, okay for the constant. But if it said about the velocity, so your answer is six point two eight with the direction of the theta hatch meter per second. You can write down like this if it's said about the velocity, not about the speed. So for C, as you can see, the centripetal acceleration at three meter away is also inferring to the, the velocity, the tangential velocity at three centimeter. So as the different radio or the position is caught with the different uh, tangential velocities so so this case for finding the a at three um, meter you have to find the v at three meter first and you square it up over r that's the way you find the centripetal acceleration here and how can you find the v at 3 meter as you see the relation of omega is equal to 2 pi over t and the velocity uh, tangential velocity is equal to 2 pi r over t yeah with this relation here you can see the link between omega v and r Right. Finally, you get the if you divide omega by vt, for example, omega over vt, what you're gonna get? You're gonna get uh, one over r. So with this, you have the relation of vt equal to omega r. Right. If you would like to find any v, you multiply omega with any r. So in this case, we would like to determine Vt at 3 meter. So by that, you have the omega r and sub omega, you have found it in the A uh, sub question is 0.4 pi. And how about r? The radius is 3 meter. Here. So you got 1.2 pi as your velocity. To determine the uh, centripetal acceleration from this case, so your AC is V square over R, so that is 1.2 pi squared up over R, which is in this case, this is 3. Right, so final uh, acceleration is um, 4.5. 
seven uh, three and where's my so the final AC is four point seven three seven meter per second square. This is the magnitude of acceleration. But if you would like to determine the acceleration in terms of vector like this, how can you do it? So you can use the polar coordinate to, determine, uh, to represent the direction of the vector. If says so, you're gonna get AC as your vector equal to 4.737. In what direction? So direction should be radial direction, right? The direction is r hatch. r hatch, right? This, but the centripetal acceleration gonna point toward the central. If you have r hatch direction here is plus, so when it's pointing toward, it's gonna be minus r hatch in terms of direction. This is your a c or the centripetal acceleration of this coroson. Note it again because the coroidal moving with the constant tangent shield, but with different radius, you have different tangent shield velocity, and the direction of the acceleration or the centripetal acceleration is pointing toward the central. So the direction of it is supposed to be minus r, since the tangent shield velocity is. Direction is at the theta hatch direction, and that's it. This is another case of circular motion. Since the the first one that we did learn is the uniform circular motion, right? That you know the V T is constant which is in this case is the speed of the tangential velocity. But from now, we're gonna have the relation of the uh, Vt is not constant. That we have the acceleration happen at the tangential path. Yeah, now you introduce the acceleration to the tangent, so it's no longer constant around this. So now you have both chain of the direction with the tangential acceleration. You have the direction of Vt and also the magnitude of Vt chain. Okay, both of these factors gonna be varies in this case. That's the reason you have the tangential acceleration. As you also know that you already have the centripetal acceleration, right? Your AR here or AC, AI is represent the radial and T is represent tangential. That's why I always write down uh, the V around the tangential part is the Vt. Right. And the reason that you have this At because your Vt is wary this time. With the resultant acceleration, if you have two components of acceleration, this is along A axis, this is along the C axis, you can sum it up as a vector. So you have the result hand vector here due to this AT and AR. So to, to, to determine the components, so you have two terms to define now the tangential acceleration and also the radial acceleration. And this radial, as you know, is your AC, right? Is V square over R and minus is because it's pointing 
toward the central direction. This is your R minus direction. And how about the AT here? AT is the change of the uh, velocity here. Not only the direction, but also the magnitude as well. Again, I repeat this to let you know that this is the reason that we have to note everything that happened in tangential as AT, everything happened in radio as AR. And when you would like to sum this up, you have to sum as a vector using the magnitude of it to square it up. So your A now is no longer only the AC or AR, you have both AT, which is on the theta direction, and also AR or AC in R direction. Even this is pointing uh, in minus side direction, so I will write it down later. So if you like to determine the magnitude of it, just square both of the components up under the square root. Square it up, then sum it together and have a square root it up. This is your tangential acceleration. So now, since I already said previously, to easy to be easier to, to determine uh, your acceleration as a vector, you have to introduce the polar coordinate to make it easy. Since the Cartesian coordinate to represent the direction to the x and y direction, you have the x i, x hat or i hat like this, to represent the unit vector that pointing to x direction. Or here, you got y hat or j to point out like unit vector. And these are theta and are also unit vector in polar coordinate. Right, and you can define uh, R that pointing from the central toward outside of the circle. This is the R hatch direction. And you can see the sweep of the theta the theta is we from the x axis, right? So that this is the point that uh, perpendicular to R and pointing to sweep the theta further. That is how you uh, explain about the total acceleration in terms of vector. So now we can uh, operate both in the scalar and vector, which is all these quantities like the uh, displacement, um, the velocity, the acceleration. So if you said in the circular motion, your V is your VT, your A is both AT and AR, is now introduced. They are vector. That's the reason why you have to introduce new coordinate to simply explain it. If you would like to determine the magnitude of the total acceleration and also the direction, how can you do it? Right. As you see, this is the part that no longer a uniform circular motion because you have the acceleration at the tangential. So this is your tangential acceleration. Mm -hmm. And now because you have this acceleration and moving on the circular part with the tangential velocity at this point. You also have the uh, centripetal acceleration as well. Right. With these two components, you will find the, uh, the, the total acceleration. Here you can sum AT with AR, so this is your your resultant acceleration. You like to determine the size of A here. And about this angle, how about the direction is it <coughs> of the acceleration? So how can you do that? So let's start from the definition of the, the uh, magnitude of the total acceleration, which is 
this is come from that you have the summation of the a uh, in the tangential direction plus a in the uh, uh, radial direction like this in order to find the magnitude of it you square the component is up so if you find the at you at square plus a r square and where is at come from uh, the constant acceleration the state here is your tangential acceleration so now you know the acceler uh, the tangential acceleration you have to find the radial one how can you find it in order to find the radial direction you know the relation of the tangential velocity and the the radius so that your ar is so v square, which is 6 meter square here, over r, which is the radius of the, uh, the circular path or the curve like this, which is 500 meter. So now you find your AC is equal to 0 0.072 meter per second square. This is your AR or your AC. I can write out as AC here. But as you can see, the AC is pointing toward the central. So the direction that we already learned is, if you would like to write it correctly, is minus C, 0 0.072 in R direction. Mm -hmm. Uh, and to determine the AT, you can write down properly as well. If you state the angle is putting toward on this direction, so your your AR, uh, not AR, sorry, the AT is the value of it, like 0 0.3 in minus theta, or uh, in this case is phi that direction in unit of meter per second square this is your vector or this is your vector you don't need to write down like this but to to make it uh, as a vector definition you can sub all this information if they are ask you about the the total or the resultant vector not about not only the magnitude of it, but in this case, we would like to find the magnitude to complete uh, the question. So, the magnitude of A is equal to square root of 0 0.3 square plus 0 0.072 square if you have minus sign put it but it's gonna go away due to the square up so the, the final result is 0 0.309 meter per second square this is the magnitude of total acceleration vectors and how about the direction or the angle so you like to determine the phi or the angle between AT and A here. You can use the relation of the trigonometry, right? As you can see, tan phi is equal to magnitude of AR and divided by AT. So if you know two components can make a ratio of it, you can get the tan phi of it. So to determine the V, you can have the <laughs> R10 of AR over AT, which is uh, 0 0.072 over AT, which is the uh, here, 0 0.3. And using the calculator, you will find the R10 is equal to 13.5 uh, degrees, which is Pointing downward, you can write down like minus 30, 13.5 degree from x axis as well. 
So this is how you determine the uh, acceleration of the resultant acceleration, the magnitude of it, and also the tangential. If you would like to write down the resultant, so you can put it as the minus 0.3 in a v direction and minus 0 0.072 in r direction. This is your acceleration as a vector. Vector because this is only vector A with from two components in polar coordinate. To remind you that the polar coordinate we define as the radians R and the theta of V as this position. This is your you can use this or this is depend on how you define the angle since we define as a phi like this so this direction is supposed to be the phi hatch so if it's pointing on different position different direction you have the minus size of it. and this is how you find and between this phenomenon